surviving a terrorist attack and transforming from a negative and angry person into the best version of yourself. Is this possible? Yes. It took some time, but it happened to me. And it's all because of this angel in disguise. When my parents got divorced, when I was just a teenager, I went on this downward spiral of losing myself into substance abuse, anger, negativity, and a lot of self-pity. My days had been made dark by reasons beyond my control, but it was me with my own behavior, my response, who made them even darker. Because why did my parents have to divorce? Why did they do this to me? Because poor me. I victimized myself for years, pushing everybody away who tried to come even close to me. And this went on for most of my adult life. But five years ago, this woman, Veronique, came into my life and changed everything. Because Friday the 13th, November 2015, my days were dark again at that time. And it was at this day, this Friday the 13th, my life would change forever. I went to a rock show with three of my best friends in Paris to, at the Bataclan Theatre. At that night, a terrorist attack took place and 89 people were shot right beside us. Me and my buddies miraculously survived the attack. We had to crawl over dead and injured bodies that were scattered all over the floor, making our way to the exit. We made it out alive. It was nothing short of a miracle. After Bataclan, after the attack, I suffered from PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. Uh, I had major panic attacks, chronic insomnia, and a lot of nightmares. And you would think all the ingredients are there. All the ingredients are there for this negative person to go down this downward spiral of self-pity again. It was almost expected that such a tragic and senseless violent act would make me feel so dark, angry, and negative again. But this time, it didn't happen, and it's all because of her. When I escaped the attack, the Bataclan Theater, I had no idea where to go. I ran into the first place I could find, a bar. And of course, I didn't know anyone there. And I was in, in a total state of panic. But then there was this stranger, Veronique, a woman who was having a drink with her best friend. She saw me running in, covered in blood, and she treated me like one of her own. Like a mother, she nurtured me, and she took me into her home. Where I met her family, she let me take a shower to wash the blood of my body. She gave me some clean clothes and gave me something to eat. She even spoke to my family on the phone to let them know that I was kind of all right. When I was at Veronique's house, I learned that my three buddies I went to the concert with were all alive. And when I found out, she saw that I was holding back my tears because I'm not the kind of person who cries publicly. But she said to me, Ferry, it's okay to cry. And I did, for a very long time. It was almost as Veronique gave me permission to express my uh, true feelings. I felt safe after feeling so unsafe. And so here I was, in the house of, until an hour ago, total strangers, and I was crying my eyes out. And it felt so natural. It felt so natural because Veronique treated me like family. She gave me what I needed most, a shoulder to cry on. And when I left her house the next morning to go back to the Netherlands on the street, I'll never forget this, she gave me this enormously motherly hug, enormous motherly hug on the street of Paris, where we shared a lot of tears together. And when I got home that evening, she had sent me the most loving text message, where she told me that uh, she and her family, they missed me, they told me what I meant to them, that she loved me, and that she hoped that I would come back home soon. To her home, of course. Nurturing a total stranger, telling someone what they mean to you, Veronique responded in a way that, came, that was far from natural to me. But seeing and to my core feeling what it could do to someone, responding in the way that she did, it made me feel hurt, it made me feel safe, it made me, it made me feel loved. And this encounter with a total stranger, it finally woke me up. And what so many people had tried over the years, connecting with me on a deep emotional level, and most of them had all failed, Veronique succeeded in one night. She succeeded in one night because we were one and the same. We were human beings traumatized by terrorism. Of course, I was the one who saw it happen,
but she was the one who saw our beloved city and people under attack. And she needed me as much as I needed her. And her way of responding to this was to do what was in her DNA, to reach out and help. I think Veronique and I, we try to turn our grief into some form of relief, I guess. And I found out that it heals as well, sharing your, um, your grief. And after my soul was woken up by Veronique, I responded to this ordeal in a way the old me never would have. Instead of being angry and victimizing myself, I started to help others. I connect with, connected with the world. I created a movement for people who, like me, had survived terror attacks because I've experienced firsthand with Veronique that night that sharing your grief helps. It's healing. It's almost like medicine. And it didn't stop there. I even told people who were close to me, people who should have heard it years before, what they meant to me. And this might sound a bit cheesy, but looking dead in the eye, seeing people getting shot right beside me and meeting Veronique, wanted me to emotionally connect with my loved ones. And it didn't stop there, because I even became friends with Asdin Amimur. Asdin lost his son the night of the attack. His son was there in the Bataclan with me. His son Sammy was shot by a cop, because Sammy was one of the terrorists. Yes, I became friends with the father of a terrorist. And people always ask me, why did you want to meet the father of an individual who was pointing his Kalashnikov at you? Well, I wanted to meet with Asdin Amimur, the father of Sammy, because, again, I've experienced that sharing your grief heals. It's healing. And I knew he must have been grieving too. Um, he lost his son. And it helps to connect with people like that, to share your grief. And especially people who are in the same storm as you, but just on a different boat. My life has been a roller coaster the past five years. It sometimes feels like I'm living a dream. Uh, yes, really, um, I have never been this happy. And of course, if I could erase the attack out of my mind, I would be uh, happy to do so. But I had to deal with this major setback. A setback that gave me so many life lessons in the end, in the form of, uh, so many gifts in the end, in the form of life lessons, uh, friendship, and meeting with incredibly inspiring people that mean the world to me. My question to you, the audience is, do you have people around you that mean the world to you, but don't know it? I want you to tell them. I want everyone who is listening to my talk today to pick a person in their life and tell them what they mean, that mean the world to them and to tell them. I want you to tell the specific person why you are so happy and thankful that he or she is in your life. Don't be like me. Life can be over in a split second. Give yourself this gift. Realize that in this picture that's taken at the Bataclan a few minutes for the concert are 89 people that did not make it out alive. They were shot to death. Fathers, brothers, mothers, sisters, friends, loved ones, and sons. The son of Asdin Amimur, for example. Realize that this man lost his child, his blood. I mean, is there anything worse for a parent losing your, their kid? I wouldn't know. Unfortunately, what I do know is what it's like losing your father. Because I've lost mine way too early and only two weeks ago. And of course, this is, an hor this is a horrible thing to go through, but I nurture myself with the thought that five years ago in Paris, that Friday the 13th, I gained a mother. And although my father isn't here anymore to see his first granddaughter grow up, because in a few days from now, I'll, my life will dramatically change again. I will be a father, and it's a girl. I know someone in France is going to be an awesome, awesome grandmother or auntie. And if my little girl resembles Veronique just the tiniest bit, I can tell you all that I will be a very, very happy and proud father.